Ever wished you could just wave a magic wand and poof, all your ABAP documentation just writes itself? Oh, tell me about it. Keeping that stuff up to date, it's uh, it can be a real drag sometimes. Right. So get this. Yeah. We're diving into this LinkedIn post by Mario Andresha. Andresha. Okay. Yeah. And he lays out this super cool way to automate ABAP documentation using AI. Oh, wow. And and get this, it works on legacy systems too. No kidding, even without cloud integration. No cloud needed. Oh. No changes to your SAP system, just straight up AI magic. That's impressive. How's he pulling that off? Well, he's basically put together like this, this toolkit. Okay. Uses Visual Studio Code, you know that. Yeah, yeah. With this extension called Klein. Klein. Then there's an AI model. You can even pick which one you want to use. Right. And he uses the MCP app at server to talk to your SAP system. I see. And, oh, he throws in Mermaid CLI sometimes to make some cool diagrams. Oh, nice. For visualizations. But uh, before we get lost in all the techie stuff, oh. can you walk us through how it actually works? Sure. Sure. So Andre Shack, he sets up this four-step workflow, and it's actually pretty simple when you get down to it. Okay. It all starts with what he calls plan mode. This is where Klein gathers all the info about the ABAP object you want to document. So like a package. Exactly, yeah. A package, a program, whatever you need. Okay. And Klein uses a prompt, kind of like a specific instruction you give it. Right. And then it connects to your SAP system using that MCP app server we talked about. The sign's like our little AI assistant grabbing all the details we need based on what we tell it. You got it. And then once Klein has all the info, things get really interesting, we move into act mode. Act mode. Like a... Uh... Like acting. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it yeah. takes all that data and starts generating documentation in Markdown format. Cool. It even uses a predefined template so everything looks nice and consistent. Makes sense. So we've got the basic documentation framework. What happens next? Now it's time for visuals. Clank can capture screenshots of all the important SAP GUI transactions. Really? Yeah. Like SE38, SE24, anything you normally use with your ABAP objects. Wow. It uses another prompt for this and interacts with the GUI through something called MCP SAP Guy. Okay. And get this, it even uses image recognition to make sure it's getting the right stuff. So it's not just spitting out boring text, it's actually taking screenshots from your SAP system. You got it. It makes the documentation so much easier to follow. That's really cool. Yeah. So what's the grand finale? What's the last step? Well, in the last step, it's all about putting it all together. You know, the finishing touches. Right. Klein can render mermaid diagrams, which can be flowcharts or class diagrams. Okay. All sorts of visualizations. And then it combines all the pieces into one big markdown document. Sounds pretty efficient. You've mentioned prompts a couple of times now. Seems like they're a pretty big deal in this whole thing. Absolutely. They're at the heart of the whole workflow. Every action Klein takes is guided by these specific prompts. And how many are there? There are four main ones that Andres Schock highlights in his post. Okay. One to kick off the documentation, one for the screenshots, one for diagrams and combining files. Oh, right. And a last one to clean up any temporary files. Gotcha. And the best part is they're designed to be super easy to use. You just copy and paste them. Wait, copy and paste? Yeah. You don't need to be a coding whiz to make this work. So you're telling me. You just grab the prompts from his GitHub. Okay. Paste them into Klein and let the AI do its thing. That's wild. So simple. And to help us picture all of this, he included some visuals in his post, right? He did. You'll see screenshots of Koa Klein, snippets of the documentation, and examples of the screenshot process. That's awesome. It really helps to see it all in action. Yeah, it makes it feel much more real, you know. Totally. And it's super impressive to see what it can do. It's like peeking behind the curtain and seeing how this AI magic actually works. It really does feel like magic sometimes, huh? Yeah, it really does. But let's let's dig into it a little more. You mentioned these prompts that kind of act as instructions for Klein. Right. And what I thought was cool is that Andre Shack didn't just make it like super rigid, you know. Oh yeah, totally. He built in a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Like you can customize those prompts, make them fit whatever you need for your documentation. Exactly. It's not just automating the boring stuff, it's about giving you control. Right, exactly. <laughs> and you see that right away with prompt 1. That's the one that starts the whole documentation process, right? Uh -huh. You feed Klein the name of your ABAP object. Right. So like a package name. And you tell it how you want the documentation structured. Yeah. And Andre Sheck gives you a good template to start with. Okay. But you can totally tweak it. You can add sections, take stuff out, whatever works for you. Once Klein has the basic documentation from prompt one, you switch to act mode. Act mode. Gotcha. Very cool. So prompt one sets the stage. And then prompt two is where we get those visuals with the SAP GUI screenshot. You got it.
Gotcha. That's where you tell Klein which transactions you want screenshots from. So maybe you need a screenshot of a program in SE38. Right. Or maybe it's the definition of a class in SE24, you know? So you're basically walking Klein through the SAP system like you would a person, showing it what you want documented. Yeah, exactly. And that's where the MCP SAP GLI server comes into play. Okay. Klein Klein actually uses that server to interact with your SAP UI. It's clicking buttons, navigating menus, the whole nine yards. It's like it's actually using the system itself. Pretty much. Yeah. And it uses image recognition to double check it's capturing the right things. That's crazy impressive. Andro Shack really thought of everything, huh? He really did. And then we get to prompt three. This is where things get visually interesting. This is for those mermaid diagrams. Oh, yeah. Those are really cool. They're a great way to show information visually right in the documentation. Yeah, like flow charts, sequence diagrams, class diagrams, yeah. all right there using like simple code. And Klein does all the rendering using the Mermaid CLI, so you don't need any extra design tools. That's all built in. Exactly. Super streamlined. I love it. So prompt three. We're making things pretty, and then Klein also combines all the chapters in the one document, right? It does, yeah. It's a technical thing. The documentation has to be made in separate chapters at first because of file size limits. I see. So Prompt 3 tells Klein to put it all back together into one nice markdown file. Makes sense. Mm. So we've got all the info, screenshots, diagrams all packaged up. What about Prompt 4? What's left for that one to do? Prompt 4 is of the cleanup crew. Okay. Just tells Klein to delete all those temporary chapter files. Makes sense. That way, all you're left with is the final documentation, nice and clean. I like it. It's like having an AI assistant that not only does all the work, but also tidies up afterwards. Exactly. It's all about making your life easier. When you look at all these prompts and how they fit together, it's like Andre Kashak has created this documentation symphony, you know? Oh, I love that analogy. It really is a symphony of AI code and a little human ingenuity sprinkled in. And speaking of human ingenuity, Andrashek is really big on encouraging people to go beyond these basic prompts, right? Absolutely. He sees this as just the starting point. Like a foundation. Exactly, yeah, a foundation that you can build on and experiment with. He's really empowering developers to take ownership of the process, you know? Yeah, he is. And to make it even easier, he included all those visuals in the post. Screenshots of pox lines, snippets of the documentation, examples of the screenshot capturing. Yeah, those must be really helpful for someone who's just starting out with all this. They really are. It's one thing to hear about it, but seeing it all in action, that's what really makes it click. I bet. It becomes much more real. Totally. And when you see what it can do, it's really impressive. You know, I can imagine someone seeing those visuals and thinking, I can actually do this. Right. That's got to be such a powerful feeling, especially with a technology like AI that feels so, I don't know, transformative. Absolutely. This goes way beyond just automating some documentation, you know. It's Gosh. about giving developers more power, sparking their creativity, and hopefully leading to better software all around. Helping them out, finding problems, and making things more efficient. Exactly. And it's not just about bugs. AI could help with performance security, even refactoring code, things that take a lot of time and expertise, right. AI could make those tasks faster, easier, and accessible to more developers. It's like having a whole team of code reviewers working with you, constantly giving you feedback and suggestions. That's a great way to put it. It makes you think about how the role of a developer will change with all this AI. That's the big question, isn't it? I think developers will need to be more strategic, focus on the big picture, the design and problem solving, and let the AI handle the more routine stuff. So less about writing code and more about using AI effectively. Yeah, exactly. Knowing how to tell the AI what to do and how to use the results. And you can't forget about communication and collaboration. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Those skills are going to be even more important as developers work more closely with AI and with people who might not be as technical. It's a good reminder that even with all this automation, human skills are still essential. Definitely. We're not just building software, we're building solutions for people. That's what makes all of this so interesting, this whole thing that Andre Jacques started. It's not just about making things more efficient. It's about changing how we think about software development. It is. It's about the future of development, how the role of the developer is changing, and how humans and AI can work together. It's like a call to action for all of us developers, right? Yeah. Keep learning, stay curious, embrace the changes. You never know. You might be the one who builds the next amazing AI-powered tool. That's right. Yeah. Well, this has been a really fascinating deep dive, wouldn't you say? It really has. I'm feeling pretty optimistic about what the future holds. Me too. <laughs>
Who would have thought that ABAP documentation could lead to such a big conversation? Right. Don't forget to check out Mario Andrashak's post if you want to learn more. It's a great place to start. It just shows how powerful it is to share knowledge and get people excited about new ideas.